I'm Francis McGovern from Literary Traveler and I'm going to be headed down to Savannah, Georgia today for a literary tour with Flannery O'Connor. I'm going to try to trace some of the important uh, places um, that Flannery O'Connor uh, spent time in in Georgia. We'll be visiting her home in Andalusia and we'll be visiting uh, where she was born, the city where she was born, Savannah, Georgia. So we hope to um, find some interesting places and talk to some interesting people. Now we're off and we're ready to go on the road and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, a good trip. Our first stop was to get clean before we hit the road. The story that had influenced me the most was A Good Man is Hard to Find. There was something modern and terrifying about its vividness and cruelty that I can never fully understand, which is what makes it so real for me. There's a killer on the road. The story is about a killer known as the misfit and a family that takes a wrong turn on the road and the deadly result of the encounter. We're headed down into uh, Flannery O'Connor country. We are um, in North Carolina and we're headed into South Carolina. We're going over a bumpy bridge right now. Um, that's okay. It's strange. I thought it only felt right to, to drive down to Georgia because um, one of Flannery O'Connor's most interesting stories um, to me has always been a good man is hard to find and you don't know what to expect when you're driving down um, you're very hesitant to pull off a uh, dirt road and um, Luckily, I haven't been had to do that, and uh, don't foresee the need to. Um, but it's interesting reading her when you're driving down. I stopped a few times, and I I read a few passages of A Good Man Is Hard to Find, and a few of her other stories. And there's definitely some threads that run through. Um, there's violence in her fiction. The sense of, I guess, religious uh, commitment and a feeling of um, certain people who are saved and who aren't saved. And we're heading into uh, South Carolina pretty soon. We finally made it to Savannah after a day and a half of driving and stayed at the Marshall House, which has a reputation for being a haunted hotel. Personally, have not had an experience, but you can tell when somebody really has. It's funny to me, you know. I could, I, I have guests that come in that really, really want to see ghosts, and they get really disappointed. And then I have guests that I don't think really wanted to see the ghost, and they did. Um, we have a cat. Uh, we have a dog. We have a little girl who apparently likes to tickle the bottom of your feet. We've had that happen to a few people. Um, a little boy who likes to bite. There is one story of uh, the mother, and I believe her younger daughter was here and her daughter, they had one of the rooms with the tubs and um, she kept hearing her daughter talking to somebody in the bathroom and laughing and she would open the door and there would be nobody there. It's okay, you know, kids have imaginary friends. Well, when her daughter got out, she had bite marks on her arm that weren't from her. So that's, you know, um, a soldier that roams the halls and of course we have Mary Marshall who comes to visit, but all of our ghosts are very friendly and like the little kids, they're very fun, they like to play games, nobody's ever been you know, like spooks, like haunted, scared haunted, but you know, maybe a little spook, like, oh my God, that really was here. So those are, those are the main ones we really hear about. Before visiting some places related to Flannery O'Connor, we started to explore some sites in and around Savannah. One of our first stops was Bonaventure Cemetery, where Johnny Mercer, the songwriter, and Conrad Aiken, the writer, were buried. This cemetery was part of the setting for Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Back when Cotton was king, 
The Factor's Walk in downtown Savannah was where the cotton was bought and sold. Flannery O'Connor was born in Savannah, Georgia, and we tried to visit her childhood home, but it wasn't open to the public that day. Flannery O'Connor grew up in the shadow of St. John's Cathedral, which was directly across the square from her childhood home. First time I got to go to Andalusia, and I have to say of all the places that we saw, I think it was the most powerful. Um, because it's one thing to, to know that she lived on this farm and to know that she um, you know, rode every day for three hours, but to actually see the room that she lived in and um, with the bookcases and her desk and just know that that was the center of her life right there in that room. And to be able to look out from her windows and just see the, even still, you can see the countryside she was writing about, the woods, the fields, um, that situation that's sort of removed from the city and um, just so, still so powerfully evokes the landscape of her stories, but also the sense that that farmhouse was, this, was just the focus of her attention, that she drew all her material really from within that radius. Um, it was very, very powerful just to see the place that she spent all those hours writing those stories. Flannery O'Connor said, the writer operates at a peculiar crossroads where time and place and eternity somehow meet. We hope we brought you a glimpse of some of those places. Join us again to explore your literary imagination on LiteraryTraveler.tv. Only the good Lord knows, tears he cries.